guys. So yeah, it's time for another magic marker hand. This is the, the third one. And uh, this is kind of one of my favorites. This is very important. Most people who make professions of faith in Jesus, they continue to struggle with sin for years and years and years, never learning how to live by faith or repentance, how to live by the power of the Spirit who produces um, a growing death to your loves of this world and growing life to your loves of the next world. I, it's just not something that happens. And in my own life, I spent about 18, 19 years living under the say I'm a sinner, try real hard, do the best I can, hope for the best or else version of the gospel. It just doesn't work. There's no power in it. And some, some godly brothers uh, explained to me the gospel a little better, and all of a sudden it began to open up and blossom for me. And, and then when I saw the Spirit show me how to, to break a very sinful, wicked sin habit, uh, a besetting sin that just consumed me and caused me great deep shame, when I saw the Spirit just turn that thing into nothing, like it was a Tyrannosaurus Rex with, with a Velociraptor uh, pack around it, and, and now all of a sudden it's just a tiny little skink that runs across the screens of my life every now and then. Oh, what wonder. One of the things that I learned that helped me a lot was this death and new life magic marker hand. So I want to give this one to you today. This one, I'm going to have a little bit of explanation along the way, and I might mess up, which will make this video much realer, won't it? So please just bear with me. We're using the color red on purpose. We're talking life or death here, guys. Jesus does something amazing for us. Now, we begin with this simple definition. You ready? Take a look at my wrist. You ready? Here is the key thing. You ready? That word, relation. Relation. My, my hand is related to my arm. Therefore, my hand is alive. One of the things that we need to begin with here is to recognize that death means separation from life. If my hand were to be cut off, it were to be separated from my wrist, it would be separated from my arm, my heart, the rest of the body, it would die. And that's the whole point when we talk about death. It's a severing of a relationship. So all people are born dead in terms of a relationship with God, but they're born alive in terms of relationship with Satan, sin, and death. Well, I want to show you how Jesus, when he saves us, takes care of severing our relationship one aspect at a time with Satan, sin, and death. So we're going to begin here. We're going to use those knuckles again. Watch. We're going to write this one here on each knuckle, the word dead. Yeah, there we go. That last one almost looks like a B. It's a D. Dead. And then on the two middle ones, we're going to squeeze right underneath of it so we've got room here. Dead. Two. And now I'm going to use a, a, an abbreviation here so that you understand how full this is. Dead to God. Father, Son, and Spirit. G-F-S-S. That is how we begin life right now, all right? Meanwhile, we have a relationship to Satan, sin, and death. We want to see that severed without losing our hand, okay? You with me, guys? So here's how it works. First one here, all right? We're going to write this word on the thumb. And yeah, a, a little crazy. Uh, if you saw me in the, the gospel hand, you saw some of those words were kind of long and my fingers weren't long enough to write them all on. But the first word is penalty. All right? Because we're related to Satan, sin, and death, we're under the penalty for our sin. We're going to be judged. We know we're guilty. This is Romans chapter 1 through chapter 3. We know we're guilty. Well, Jesus comes along and he crosses that out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put an X over the P. And that's going to be very, very important in the very near future. We're going to see that those two letters again, and they're going to mean something, okay? But Jesus kills the penalty of sin. He makes us right with God. He justifies us. 
This is what justification is all about. Removing the penalty, double imputation. Jesus' obedience is credited to us in terms of his payment on the cross, removes our sins, and his obedience in his life makes us righteous with God. Double imputation. So the penalty gets crossed out. Our relationship with Satan, sin, and death in that way has been removed. Next one is very, very important. It's going to be another P word. In fact, all of these are going to be P words. All right, let me just write this one out. This is going to be one where I'm going to run out of room. So you're just going to let me say it. All right. Um, paternity. Now that word paternity, you can hear parent kind of echoed in there. Yes. Paternity. It's just talking about that we have a, a relationship with Satan, sin, and death. I mean, literally... Satan is considered our spiritual father. Um, sin is our bosom buddy, and, and death is our long-awaited bride. I mean, this is just not good stuff, all right? Well, Jesus comes along, and he saves us, and he crosses out our paternity. We will get adopted by God. He now becomes our father. We no longer have that relationship with Satan, sin, and death. We're now children of God. And because we're children of God, the Spirit is present with us, who enables us to consider ourselves children of God and cry out to Father, Abba, to use that Greek word. All right, now, middle one. This is the big one for most of us. Another P word, all right? We have a relationship with Satan, sin, and death until we get saved in terms of penalty, paternity, and power. Power of sin in our lives. The fear of death. The, the tempting ability of Satan because of that power and that fear. And along comes Jesus, and he crosses out the power of sin in sanctification. We now are declared holy. That's one of the related words, the sanctification. Perfectly right for God, fit for his use in his kingdom, the family business, seeing Jesus get acknowledged as the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's phenomenal. Wonderful thing. And so the, the power of of sin gets killed in our lives. Now, we get to another P word here, and this explains why it doesn't feel like these things are actually dead. We still feel guilty, the penalty of sin. We still fear that God is angry with us, not really our Father. And we still certainly feel the power of sin. I mean, all, all sin has to do is use one of those two voices. It can shout out to us like the slave master, you belong to me. Or it can shout out to us like the seductress, come on, baby, you know you love it. And we're back into it again. Well, this last one tells us about the promise that one day it's completely gone. All right. Here's the P word. Let me squeeze her on here. Again, this is going to be filling up my finger. And that's okay. All right. And I think I'm going to be able to get this one on here. What do you know? Yeah. Presence. One day, Satan, sin, and death will be gone in terms of their presence as well. Those are the four ways in which we have a relationship with them. They have penalty over us. They have paternity over us. They have power over us. They have presence over us. But Jesus takes care of the penalty and justification. He takes care of the paternity and adoption. He takes care of the power and sanctification. And one day, he will take care of the presence in glorification. Oh, that glorious promise that one day... We will be made perfect. We'll be given new bodies and new souls who know no presence of sin on the outside or on the inside. No presence of Satan. No presence of death. That's what we long for. But how in the world, while we're waiting for presence to be taken care of, while we're waiting for glorification to come, how in the world do we live in the benefits of these three deaths to our relationship with Satan, sin, and death? The Holy Spirit does one more thing in us. And I'm not going to be able to get all this on here, but I'm going to do the best I can here. And I'm going to use a word that you might not think of. All right. Um, most of us are used to a dis different word. I'm going to intentionally mix it up so that you won't just, with a little bit of familiarity, ignore the significance of what I'm saying. Persistence. Now, most of you are used to the word perseverance. And indeed, that is exactly what the Spirit does now. The Spirit, through assurance, He causes us to persevere in our faith. Assure, uh, uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. It's very, very powerful. 
What the Spirit does, according to Romans 8, is He assures us of our justification, assures of our adoption, assures us of our sanctification, assures us of our glorification, and yields in us persistence in believing in Him. Persistence in faith. God, please make me love you more. Persistence in repentance. God, please kill my desires for Satan, sin, and death more. That's mortification and vivification. In fact, we want to write them on here because that's what persistence gives us. Morty and his wife, Vivian. Mortification and vivification. Mort, death, viv, life. That's what the Holy Spirit does through persistence, perseverance in faith. He preserves us in our faith and grows us in assurance that becomes fuel to remind us that we are already completely forgiven, to remind us that we are securely his children, to remind us that the power is all gone. It's a lie when the slave master and the seductor speak up. And to remind us that one day we will be in his presence and we will be glorified. And so we persevere. We persist in our faith. And we experience mortification and vivification. And our relationship with Satan, sin, and death. Remember I told you we're going to get back to this one, right? Okay? We now become alive to God. I'm squeezing so much so my hand. Alive to God here. But I want to give you one last little symbol. All right? Now... Of course, no tattoos. If you have tattoos, that's okay. All right. But it has pagan roots and it's probably not a good thing to do. But I'm going to give you this. So we use the letter P. Okay. In the Greek language, all right, the P actually stands for the letter Rho, our letter R. All right. And so then in the English, the X. Okay. The X. In the Greek language, that actually stands for key. So now, uh, C-H-I, if you were to stop and go key row, you've got the first two sounds in the word Christ, the Messiah. Isn't that neat? Isn't that an easy way to handle it? Christ crosses out on the cross the P's that keep us in relationship to Satan, sin, and death so that they're gone no more in our lives. So there you have it. Wow, look at that hand covered with red. The lifeblood of Jesus. Wow. Very, very cool. Jesus crosses out our relationship with all the P relationships we have with Satan, sin, and death and gives us a new relationship with God. By the Holy Spirit, we persist in putting to death Morty and bringing to life Vivian our desires so that we are alive to God. So there you have it death and new life in your hand. I know that's a lot. Okay. Uh, please. It's going to take a while to get this one down. Uh, you, you can pull your mark out and color all over your hand until you finally remember it. Your, your, your family's going to think you're nuts, but that'll be okay. You learn to live this way. It will be produce tremendous power in your life. So guys, uh, thank you for paying attention. Um, I pray for you on a regular basis for his faith and, and his repentance to grow in your lives so, so that you can mortify and vivify. I pray for that spirit to really cause you to persist in your faith so that you will know the blessings that are already yours in the death of your relationship with Satan, sin, and death. I pray for these things when I just simply say, may the grace and mercy of Christ grow your faith and repentance that you may experience greater joy in his glory. Until we see each other again, God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.